Welcome to Living the Authentic Life. And this week, instead of my fabulous husband, I had the fabulous Dr. James Flowers. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I don't replace your husband, but I hope I can come close. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, after him not traveling since January, I do miss him, but I'm kind of excited to have the remote control to myself. <laughs> Absolutely. And have girl nights with Bella at home on the couch. So cool. Yes. And um, you and I had the most incredible lunch the other day, and we talked and talked and talked for hours, and we're going to kind of bring in all of those conversations, but so much of it was about health and about our mental health and about COVID and all yeah. the anxiety we're having. In the world and, and in our own lives. And back to school and yeah. Black Lives Matter and the election and all of these things that have created so much turmoil. That's right. And today I was with my hairdresser, Suki, who I love and adore, and we were talking about even Mother Nature seems upset right now. Oh, my gosh. With all the fires and then it's hurricane season. All over season. California. Yeah. Yes, and even in Colorado where mm -hmm. my family is. Yeah. But we are living the authentic life, and we are here every week on Thursday at 10 o'clock. And thanks to our sound engineer, Adam Andrus, who is also your podcast. He is. Sound engineer. Every Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, so Tuesdays, always live at 1 o'clock. That's right. Yeah. And I am excited to be your guest then, Thank you. Too. I think you're coming up pretty soon as well. I'm so excited to have you. So yes. this is fun. It's so fun to collaborate and yeah. share and so much of our lives have been built on collaboration and yeah. that's what really drew me to talking mm -hmm. to you is that you opened an incredible institute mm -hmm. the flowers institute and it is based upon a concierge doctor concept in collaboration with specialists and experts that's right from here at the most comprehensive medical <clears throat> facility that's right. In the world, yeah. maybe. That's right. It is. And the fact that it's here in Houston, Texas, but you have so many people that come to you from around the world. Mm -hmm. And we know that people come from around the world to our medical center yeah. because it's so amazing. But Bella and I were talking on the way here. I was explaining who you are and what you do. And we had a situation that she went through that mm -hmm. I wish you could have helped us with. When she was younger, she had such extreme anxiety that she had these issues that resulted in tremendous stomach pains mm -hmm. and when she was a child she had reflux mm -hmm. and we saw 10 different doctors over a year time period and as she said spent so much money That's and right. so much effort mm -hmm. and energy and time and time and pain and mm -hmm. not getting the right answers yeah. whereas when people come to you you give them a total assessment. So it's right. not just a physical assessment from a doctor. Not at all. It's mental. It's spiritual. It's emotional. Physical. It medical. is physical. And when you figure out in their life mm -hmm. MRI, mm -hmm. you're able to tell them what's really at the core of it because it isn't always it's not always physical yeah so share yeah, some how did you medical. get to this place yeah thank you so much well uh, a thank you for having me today i'm again so grateful and so excited and you are exactly right one of the reasons that you and i hit it off so well is because we believe in this word called collaboration and that's what my life is all about is collaboration mm -hmm. we cannot do anything really alone that mm -hmm. we need uh, that's difficult, right? We want to rely on ourselves, of course, but when it comes to our health care and it comes to our lives, we really want a team. And collaborating with a team is what's so important and what really makes J Flowers Health Institute stand out. You know, not very many people under uh, know this around the mm -hmm. world, but Houston, Texas is home to the largest medical institute in the world called the Texas Medical Center. People from all over the world fly into Houston and go to the Texas Medical Center. And the reason that the Texas Medical Center was built mm -hmm. is on the theme of collaboration. 
There are so many hospitals and healthcare systems in the medical center and here in Houston. And what makes it work and what makes our healthcare so superior, uh, both in Houston at the Texas Medical Center at Jay Flowers, is that when Bella was probably going through all of her anxiety and you went through 10 mm -hmm. different doctors, I would venture to guess that maybe two of those doctors actually spoke to each other. They didn't pick up the phone and call each other. They didn't send a record over to each of the other nine doctors. They didn't do a roundtable discussion. They did their own assessment, their own evaluation, put it in our medical chart, told you their opinion, and you moved on. And then you ended up going to nine or 10 other doctors, right? Mm -hmm. Until eventually it came to some sort of resolution, which I'm so grateful for, Bella. Um, Bella, nobody knows this, but Bella's <laughs> over in the corner. We she's were just, hiding she's out. She's hiding. I'm glad she's here <laughs> and she's just getting ready to start her eighth grade year, which is so, for me, was it anxiety provoking. And for so many people during COVID, it's anxiety provoking, right? And, Parents uh, alike yeah. that kids are going back to school but not physically going back to school. And how do parents get back to work when kids aren't physically going back to school? And, right. And when they do go back to school, are they going to catch COVID? Are they going to bring it home mm -hmm. to you? Right. And what you and I talked about the other day also is you reaching out to other parents. What is everybody else doing? Yes. How is How are other moms and dads making it through this? There's a lot of people who right here at the start of school have no idea um, that they have support from mm -hmm. other parents and they just mm -hmm. need to reach out. But again, going back to that word collaboration, collaboration is what really sets us apart and what mm -hmm. sets you apart is, is that we talk, we communicate, we sit together, we're authentic, mm -hmm. we look at each other in the eye, and we really understand each other. And if we don't, we ask, can you help me understand that a little bit better? And so when you have a team of psychiatrists and psychologists and neuropsychologists and nutritionists, medical doctors, neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, interventional pain doctors, evaluating a person's total life, 360 degrees of their life, right? Which I believe is what we must evaluate in complicated individuals and complicated unknown problems. When they're sitting around a round table, or these days on Zoom, looking at each other even on Zoom, we get to listen, understand, and we can also say, hey, doc, I hear what you're saying, but this is what she told me, and I heard it in a different tone. And I, this is what I kind of think, and they're like, oh my gosh, I missed that. You're exactly right, Dr. Flowers. I think it is A, B, or C, you know, and we can really collaborate with each other and spend hours. You know, the average physician visit at a family practice doctor is about mm -hmm. 15 minutes, right? You go in, you see your doctor, you ache, your back hurts, you're anxious, you're this or that, you have a cold, and it's a quick in and out. Pay a $25 copay and you're out of the office in 20 minutes. What we do is, is we really literally spend hours upon hours with every single human being that we visit with. I call them human beings because that's what we are, is we sit with an individual and we really want to get to know that person. Because when someone has anxiety or someone has unknown nausea, unknown dizziness, unknown medical conditions, and they've been to the best in institutes in the world, Mayo, Stanford, UCLA, Vanderbilt, all over the country, and they walked away not knowing or understanding, or maybe were diagnosed with something called somatic symptom disorder, which means, well, you're having anxiety, go see a therapist. Well. It could be gastrointestinal problems. Mm -hmm. It could be an occipital nerve that's impinging on, on the medulla of the brain. It could be so many different things. And we won't know that until we really, truly evaluate that person 360 degrees and talk. I think you're such an interesting doctor because your background is also business yeah. and our first guest was my cousin John mm -hmm. Cangelosi and he is a MD also a dermatologist but he has a mindset of understanding people marketing business mm -hmm. all of that and it's rare to have both come together and the thing that I keep seeing in the successful people and I've I describe success not as just financial I believe right. it's reaching a place in life mm -hmm. that you're comfortable with your finances so you're not constantly worried but also balanced in life that's right and those people i believe have authenticity and mm -hmm. have connection and connection to me is 
feeling seen and heard. That's right. And that's what you're talking about. And I mentioned to you, I took a class at Texas A&M in the 80s. (laughs) I'm showing my age. And it was on bedside manner. And I think that, you know, the fact that you say it's the white coat syndrome. And I think sometimes people are intimidated. Mm -hmm. And just listening to Malcolm Gladwell, he was talking about how um, the different generations of or the different types of people and the way that they interact as far as a socioeconomic group is sometimes you're empowering people to ask questions. And that was one of the things they were saying is when someone from a lower income family who had not been told Mm -hmm. to question doctors would not know to ask. Whereas people from who are more educated or exposed to more, they could feel safe in asking. And I think a lot of people go to their doctors and they're scared to ask the question exactly right yeah and you're creating an interactive environment Mm -hmm. that changes that fear or just that acceptance and i think with aging people Mm -hmm. i mean you've talked about people walking in hunched over with the aid of a walker that's right and walking out standing up straight or someone who was so emotionally mm-hmm. broken that they couldn't physically get out of bed. That's right. And you help them emotionally get to this place mm-hmm. that, and sometimes that person isn't even the one asking, it's the family members. That's right. So tell us about that journey because you also work with chronic pain mm-hmm. and overcoming drug yep. and alcohol abuse. So you bet. I'm going to go. Let's talk about how this all comes about you bet absolutely i'll go back to real quick if you don't mind i'm going to go back to the white coat syndrome okay because that is a real thing whether you're 70 years old or you're whether you're 13 years old like bella and when you go to the doctor and you walk in or whether you're at a therapist or a psychiatrist office or whatever it is right you walk in and the doctor walks in in a white coat with a stethoscope around his neck And blood pressure automatically rises. You take Uh a short breath, and instead of breathing diaphragmatically, we start breathing right here with Mm -hmm. our chest, really short, shallow breaths, and we become a little bit anxious, whether we really know it or not. And my whole philosophy on healthcare is comfort, feeling like you're home, feeling like you're cared for, feeling authentic again, that this physician, this psychologist, this therapist is mm-hmm. listening to me. They mm-hmm. hear me and they understand me, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And not being rushed. And so when in, in, in my practice, what we really believe in is, again, having an open door policy and having an open concept and concierge uh, health care that you really can spend again hours and hours and hours and you we you know some days i go to work in jeans and a polo Mm -hmm. some days i rarely wear a suit to the office because i want my patients to come in and i want them to feel comfortable and i want Mm -hmm. them to know that i'm relaxed and that they're relaxed some days i do some days i don't but the whole concept is really peace of mind comfort Mm -hmm. lower anxiety lower their uh walls bring their walls down build a therapeutic alliance with that person and let them know that they can trust you and and when they have a sense of trust in you Mm -hmm. that wall literally starts coming down you take a young woman or a a 50 year old woman with uh, trauma maybe that has some sort of sexual abuse history. And she's sitting in front of a psychiatrist, a therapist, a trauma therapist, and they're in a white coat or whether they're in a suit or whatever, and they're in a white clinical setting and white floors and white walls and cold. It's, it takes a lot longer for that person to feel comfort and open. Mm-hmm. You come in my office and there's just, just comfort everywhere, comfortable sofas, comfortable chairs, Um, no white coach, you sit with a team who looks at you again and says, I'm here as many hours as you need me today. I'm all yours today and let's just talk. And that conversation flows and all of a sudden that, in this case, the woman that we're talking about feels comfortable in saying, this is my story and this Mm -hmm. is what happened. And I've never been able to tell anybody about this. And then being open enough to be able to work through that trauma and overcome that trauma. Um, so that's kind of what we're all about, and I hope that answered your question a little bit. It did, and yeah. sometimes people don't even know what's driving it. They don't know no. that the trauma was the trigger, or they've hidden that trauma. And so sometimes it's manifesting mm-hmm. as chronic pain in another part of your body or as drug and alcohol abuse. That's right. 
And yeah. that's where you've really done mm -hmm. the majority of your work is helping with people. And sometimes it's not even the patient, the human being coming in. It's mm -hmm. the family. That's right. Let's talk about that. Thank you for reminding me about that. You uh -huh. bet. I bet eight or nine times out of ten, the patient that's sitting in front of me was really a referral from a family member, uh, which is amazing to me. I hope that in our society we can become – uh, open enough and feel comfortable enough to pick up the phone and call the doctor or call someone for help ourselves. But many times it's a husband, it's a wife, it's a mm -hmm. mother, a father, a grandfather, a grandmother saying, I see my granddaughter going through this. I see my daughter and the way she interacts with her husband and the arguments they have, the drinking that she's doing or that he's doing. And what do we do about that? How do we help? And so many times it is a referral from the family and when it is, even when it's not a referral from the family, when a patient comes in on their own, we involve family. Family is critical. It's the core of your life, right? And, and, and many times we have broken relationships with our spouses that we really don't know about. You know, even during the times of COVID, right? Husbands on the road for 200 days a year, 250 days a year who are home this year together in a house with children and a wife or a wife that travels and all of a sudden she's at home with her husband every single day. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that we've seen and the trauma that we've seen, not really trauma, but the anxiety and the number of divorces that have increased. Domestic violence has increased, right? But all of that anxiety can come out of our body. There's an amazing book called uh, The Body Keeps the Score, and it is so true. When a lot of times we don't know why we're drinking or why we're taking drugs, we just think that maybe it's because we get a euphoric effect from it or it loosens us up and we're able to tolerate our husband or our wife or our children if I have a cocktail or what have you. And many times it's trauma driven from our past and you don't even really understand that. You know, I work with a woman that's 43 years old right now um, who uh, has a mother who is a supermodel, beautiful, gorgeous woman. And the dad um, is uh, an average type, uh, big boned man, right? Big guy, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, big bones. And mom is as thin as a rail, gorgeous eats great, has a wonderful life, who constantly tells her daughter to lose weight. You need to lose weight. You've got to lose weight. You're a little over, you're a little overweight. Don't eat that. That's the wrong food to eat, right? And so what has happened to her is A, she developed a disorder, uh, an eating disorder. Number two, a drinking disorder, a drinking problem. And number three, she takes GHB, which is a euphoric drug and sometimes referred to as the date rape drug because it helps her work out and it helps her body get cut and it helps her body get thin, right? And she thinks by doing this drug is going to allow her to look beautiful like her mother, quote, like her mother, but yet she never can please this woman, never has been able to please her mother. And her mother continuously says, you have to lose 10 pounds, 10 more pounds, you can do it. Can you imagine doing that to Bella? It's heartbreaking. Right. And we've, and with social media now, I was talking to another mom whose daughter is bigger boned and the kids will say, how are you popular? Because you're a big girl. Right which is just amazingly sad. And I think these kids are so focused. That's another thing, like this this idea of what we're supposed to look like mm -hmm. and how we're supposed to be. And it is so emotional. And me as a, a mom, mm -hmm. I, of course, am going, oh, my belly or whatever. Sure. So we're, we're putting that out there. And so it is a constant battle. When Bella went in again to the doctor this year, we mm -hmm. talked about like what is the appropriate size and what is sometimes the people's views mm -hmm. isn't what medically. That's so I right. think it's amazing that you can take this approach. And we're lucky that her doctor did take 45 minutes with yeah. us and talk about these things. Mm -hmm. But it is something that us as parents, we need these tools because we don't know what we're bringing forth right. from our past right. dumping on our kids. Right, intergenerational of, trauma. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so that is so incredible that you can help get to the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. And then there's been so much research, and I learned this with cancer, um, is that if you have a positive outlook, you can mm -hmm. overcome so much. So let's talk about like the mental side right. of 
physical. You bet. Yeah. Let's talk about the psychology of pain, emotional pain. Let's talk about cancer and psychology. And I'll give you, I'll even go further and talk about a, my own a life experience that I had. Um, my sister, I had twin sisters mm -hmm. and they were five years older than me. And my entire life growing up, watching uh, the twins grow up, uh, one of the twins always was worried that something was wrong with her. And she would say, I think I need to go. My grandfather was a physician and she would say, I need to go see Dr. Bill. I think this, my stomach hurts. I think I have this wrong with me. She wrapped her toothbrush every night in a uh, saran wrap. She slept with a towel on her pillow and she never was able to overcome that. Mm -hmm. And as she grew, she was an amazing, absolutely amazing mother, absolutely amazing woman, but she always had a fear that something was wrong with her. Well, one Easter, in 1980, gosh, 1984, 85, we were at my grandparents' home on Easter Sunday, and she was saying, Dr. Bill, Dr. Bill, my stomach hurts. There's something wrong. And my grandfather, who was this old physician at the time, said, Becky, it's gas. Don't worry about it. And she said, okay. And the day went on, and he finally said, lay down on the sofa on Easter Sunday. And she laid down on the sofa, and he came over, and he palpated her abdomen, and he looked over at us. I'll never forget. And he looked over and said, get up, we're going to the hospital. Went to the hospital, did a, some sort of imaging back in 1984 and 1985, and she had the tumor about the size of a grapefruit on her spleen. And so the next day she was at MD Anderson, and over the next few years she was in and out of MD Anderson. She was the first woman ever diagnosed with the type of cancer she had, and the name is about 52 characters long, so I'm not even gonna try to repeat it right now. But she was the very first person ever diagnosed with this type of cancer. And unfortunately, she would they would operate, remove a tumor, do chemotherapy, and within six or eight months, it would grow back somewhere else. And ultimately, she died and left a young daughter in first grade um, and a family just, uh, just tragically. And it was a very painful experience. But I believe with all of my heart and soul that her life of thinking – even though she was an amazing woman, I love my sister to death, she always felt like something was wrong and something was going to be wrong in her body health-wise. And I believe that we can manifest that. And I really believe that that's what happened to my sister. I think she manifested it. And uh, I know my niece, Marie, is probably listening. And uh, and what what I want to say to her is, is, is that, you know, we love our sister, your mother, but I think we can manifest our own health in positive and negative ways. So many medical research and HIV and AIDS patients. There are so many uh, long-term studies now that show that people who are depressed, anxious, and fearful that they're going to die when they are diagnosed with HIV and AIDS eventually die early. And the people who have long-term HIV that have remained positive, stayed on their medication regimen, stayed on their exercise regimen, are living 20, 30, 40 years at this point. And the same goes for cancer and every other really medical condition. It, it, our mind, what we believe, we will achieve whether it's positive or negative. And our negative thinking often gets us in trouble. And that is such a part of success. Mm -hmm. And that is where I'm so proud. I'm going to quit talking about Bella, but I'm so proud of her because we've talked about visualizing that. And yeah. she's at a place that she overcame this because mm -hmm. she visualizes that she's okay. Right. And that things are okay. And we've worked through that. Yeah. Well, I have to share my journey because yeah. I realized I was not okay. I yeah. shared with you mm -hmm. that I was perimenopausal mm -hmm. for years and it was not diagnosed. Right. And I was seeing a neurologist for my migraines right. and also seeing my OBGYN, mm -hmm. but because I didn't sit down. But as soon as I went and met with a doctor that really looked at and was able to diagnose mm -hmm. me as perimenopausal, my migraines went away, all the triggers went away. Yeah. And there's so many women in their early 50s that are struggling with this and you feel something's mm -hmm. off, but you mm -hmm. can't really place it. That's right. Let's talk about that journey. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to brag on somebody real quickly. So in my practice, every single female that comes into the practice sees a gynecologist as part of their evaluation, their mm -hmm. comprehensive evaluation, not only a health and wellness executive physical, but a separate 
uh, uh, gynecologist. And her name, if you don't mind, I'll throw yes, it out there, is Dr. Dr. Kat Carmel, Catherine Carmel. And she is amazing. They see 14 or 15 providers, including myself, during this comprehensive diagnostic evaluation. And every woman that's come through my practice over the years that has seen Dr. Carmel says to me, I'll always say, what was the best part of the evaluation? Thinking, oh, it's going to be me. And every, of course, it's all about me, yes. right? <laughs> no, it's not. Every one of them say, oh, my gosh, I had no idea about this or that that I learned from Dr. Carmel. And, and it, it is amazing what a relationship, she'll sit with a patient for five hours if she needs to. Very small concierge practice mm -hmm. uh, that Dr. Carmel has. And she will literally spend hours with women explaining, talking about hormones, talking about just all anxiety. Her mother, I believe her father was a psychiatrist and her mother a psychologist. And so I call her a gynotherapist. And I love that. Yeah. And that's what she is. And it's an amazing part of our evaluation process for women. But that piece is so important. Well, I want to give a shout out to, uh, I have two OBGYNs. Mm -hmm. The one that, that helped me to get on a patch is mm -hmm. Dr. Monica Roberson. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also work with Dr. Shelley Leeds Richter. Mm -hmm. And she was the one I saw because my former OBGYN had recommended I have a hysterectomy right. in my 40s. And thank God my neighbor, Dr. Aparna Kamat, who mm -hmm. I'm friends with, were chatting right. in the street walking the dogs. And she's like, what are you doing getting a, a hysterectomy in your 40s? So I just think it's hard mm -hmm. to count on one person. And it's not that anyone's wrong, but mm -hmm. this approach, not everyone's neighbor Right. is someone that could tell them that That's or right. not everybody has a network of mm -hmm. people to send them to every person and also it's the challenge of getting in with the specialist That's the right. fact that you guys could get in with a specialist within 24 hours mm -hmm. i shared that i have a couple of friends with kids that have been diagnosed somewhat although mm -hmm. texas children's doesn't recognize pandas but right. uh, pandas for those that don't know can you explain what it is you explain pandas, please. <laughs> okay. So it is my understanding is it occurs with with mostly children that have a strep infection and mm -hmm. there is a physical swelling of the brain that then creates neurological effects in the way it manifests. And a psychological and emotional effect that becomes comes out in the form of anxiety and fear OCD and grief. OCD or emotional right. and it changes the child they are. Yeah. And the and diagnosis is so hard to find. So hard to find, yeah. so hard because it is both medical mm -hmm. and, and psychological. psychological. And my friends whose children are, str are struggling with this, it's been so difficult and it's been difficult for the friends of the kids because that journey or the siblings right. of the kids, which is similar to so many things Absolutely. that are painful. Yes. And the psychology piece of pandas is not saying when we're saying there's a psychological component, it doesn't mean the patient is crazy or wrong no. or bad. What it does is imagine hurting every single day, 24 hours a day, and you're having pain signals go to the brain that says this hurts or that hurts. Just like in the regular or, or the general chronic pain syndrome mm -hmm. uh, population, when we have a pain signal going to our brain over and over and over and over again, 24 hours a day, it causes anxiety depression, grief, trauma, sleepless nights that activates the nervous system. And when our nervous system is activated, our pain level goes through the roof and it causes more depression and anxiety. So in pandas, it's, it's this constant, it's like a ping pong table, yes. the cycle that goes back and forth deep down and you go darker and darker unless you reach out and find an expert, right? And that's part of also what it's what you did and you searched for it and you found it. And I'm so happy to be able to, to offer a service to patients that whatever the expert is, literally because of the Texas Medical Center and our collaboration with Texas Medical Center and the institutions and the Texas Medical Center, um, we can get into those experts the same week. And many times it takes six months, eight months, nine months to get in and get that appointment. So it really is ama an amazing process to really help diagnose accurately Mm -hmm. by doing four, by seeing 14 or 15 providers 
experts and top in their field that really put together a concrete diagnosis with the best minds in the world for the brightest people in the world that come see us. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And I think that um, the experts, that's what's so hard. I know that mm -hmm. um, our sweet nephew, Barrett, who used to work with us and now is officially at Texas A&M, whoop. Congrats. Yes. And um, his girlfriend, Anna, she was having some heart issues and she couldn't get in to see a doctor. I think it was going to be four months. Mm -hmm. And I through the Friends of Nursing, met Dr. Coulter yep. at St. Luke's and was able to get her an appointment with someone. We don't all have that ability, and I applaud friends who help, and I think everyone in the medical center wants to help as mm -hmm. much as they can. Right. But you are that connection. You are opening doors for people, and anybody who's had a problem right. knows it takes so long to get in. And now with COVID, that has changed so much of healthcare. There's been an increase in the amount of people who aren't just going in to be checked. Right. Because people are afraid of getting something. We lost my father's best friend mm -hmm. from college mm -hmm. to a heart issue because he didn't he, go in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, can you? And we also talked about domestic abuse That's rising right. tremendously. Yep. I think the number when you met 80, 85%, 85 85% yes. since COVID hit domestic violence has risen 85% this year. And again, part of that is, you know, even in, in families that don't travel, mm -hmm. look at the number of layoffs that have occurred in our, in our own city, right. Of, in Houston, but really around the United mm -hmm. States. When stress hits and financial stress hits and work stress hits mm -hmm. and you're in the same home and and all of a sudden we're, we feel cooped up in mm -hmm. these times, you know, it is so important that we continue to get outside, that we continue to exercise, that we continue to take care of ourselves. And if we're not doing those things, start doing those things and understanding that you don't have to stay quote, pent up in the house with your wife or your husband or anyone else, it's okay to say, I'm going to go walk by myself. It's okay to say, I'm going to go yes. to Memorial Park and walk the three mile loop because it's great for my mind and great for my health. And uh, it's so important to, to take care of ourselves nutritionally. So many people are using these apps now to order food, fast food coming every night instead of cooking because we have a fear of going to the grocery store. And it's so important, again, that we take a deep breath during 2020 and during COVID. We've had no other choice, so many of us, but to push stop and take a breath and really reevaluate our lives and what's important to us in our lives. And, and I hope what people are finding is, is that relationships, that family, that love, that compassion, that sharing, giving, um, I'm going to give a shout out to my niece, Marie. I was talking to her on the phone the other day. And she, right now, she's on a mom's group in her neighborhood. Oh, good. And someone reached out and said that her husband had been laid off. And they were wondering if she was looking for a job for her husband and, you know, what they had a sick child. And my niece just responded and said, if you need food or anything, let me know. Well, that turned into she is providing food uh, on Instacart. She's buying 20 different families' food every week of the month. And that's what life is about. You don't have to buy 20 people food, but maybe you can help one family just giving back a little bit. That's good for her mind. It's good for the family's mind and peace of mind. And it's just the right thing to do, especially during COVID, is really to say, what can I do to help other people right now? Yeah. And that goes, I think, to purpose. I think we, we've all lost connection. We've mm -hmm. lost the yeah. sense of community, and yeah. we're struggling with how to feel that we could make an impact, and we might be, yeah, have had loss in our life with health or with finances or whatever it is. Yeah. But the thing that fills you up the most, oddly, in life is to give. That's but right. to find that way that makes sense yeah. to you. And I think you guys, when you talked to the way that I met you was through mm -hmm. Marnie Greenwood. That's right. She and I go all the way My back. My realtor, the best realtor in Houston, Marnie Greenwood. She's incredible. <laughs> and she and Sarone are going to be our guests next that week is gonna on be, the podcast. I just want to come sit where Bella's sitting to watch. 
Well, it's going to be so fun. We started talking about this a while ago because I thought it was so incredible when COVID happened that yeah. Marnie was essential and Sarone was not essential. And that we were identifying people <laughs> as essential or not essential. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but my hairdresser is, is essential. essential. Right. Suki, yeah. big shout out to you. I saw her this morning. <laughs> But um, on Marnie's uh, show on her YouTube mm -hmm. channel, you guys talked about some things that people could do. And some things mm -hmm. were so basic, but I think we just forget. Like, even I've heard people sharing this, but I thought this was great. When you're feeling anxiety, mm -hmm. don't sit and watch the news all day. That's like, right. Like, that is such a parameter. But with People want to be seen and heard. Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter. People want to uh, to feel safe. Yeah. And coronavirus. Right. And I, you turn it on, and it's and the election coming up, and there's so much. So many things hitting us all day long, every day, and especially again when we're home and the TV's on. It's CNN, it's Fox, it's every news station in the world is just inundated, inundating us with the election, with COVID, with death, with dying, with sickness, with poverty, with just fires in California, fires in Aspen, right, all over Colorado. It, 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 and when you hear that, it just depresses you, whether you know it or not. When you hear it in your mind, it's negativity, mm -hmm. and that negativity affects us emotionally. And what we want to do is, is turn that TV off and spend mm -hmm. time with each other. Again, walk outside when you can early in the morning or in the evening when it's a little bit cooler. Another great thing to do, really, by the way, I want to throw this out there because I'm such uh -huh. a huge fan of Memorial Park, is, you know, the Conservancy just built this beautiful new addition to Memorial Park right mm -hmm. in the center of it. And just going and exploring the water features and the new lake that they built mm -hmm. and the walking bridge that they're building. And it's just an amazing place to go. Just slow down, sit down and reflect on your own life and what you're doing in COVID and how your family is responding and maybe how you can give back and take care of yourself at the same time. And I think sleep is one of those things like every, whenever they interview beautiful women and yeah. their their beauty regimen. Right. I noticed they say sleep, and I'm an eight hour girl, and mm -hmm. my husband's a six hour mm -hmm. guy. So it's been hard for us to find their our balance. Mm -hmm. it, is that? A, can you ever catch up on sleep? Do you, you find that really... that is a factor with some people? I think sleep is a huge problem in our society in general. Mm -hmm. uh, the unfortunate piece of it is, is we can't catch up on our lost sleep from the day before. You just don't. You lose that hour of sleep and it affects your brain. It affects the way we think. It affects the way we feel. And if it's a chronic condition, go see a sleep specialist. But what you can do is develop a good sleep hygiene. Now, I'm one of those people that if I don't get six hours of sleep, if I'm mm -hmm. a five hour and 50 minute person, about one o'clock the next day, I'm shaking and I'm not I'm not able to think clearly and I just have to take a nap that afternoon or if I can, which is rare. But I'm one of those people, I need six to eight hours of sleep a night. There, you, uh, you need eight hours, right? You're an eight hour a night sleeper, which is great. Your husband can function on six hours. It sounds like pretty well, but find your... Find where you are mm -hmm. in your sleep and develop, can keep that consistent, whether you're on vacation, whether you're out of town, whether you're at home, whether you're traveling, whatever your sleep pattern is, keep it the same. Don't go to bed and turn on Fox or CNN and watch it before bedtime. <laughs> go to bed, turn the TV off, put your phone on the charger, right? Talk to each other for a few minutes. Or meditate and fall asleep peacefully. But really, develop sleep is so critical to our health. It just is. And it affects our nervous system and the way we feel and the way we think the next day. Okay, with kids going back to school, uh -huh. we've been having this talk in the house. Yep. How many hours do kids need? Because I've read they need more and they think they need less, but... When yeah. it's summer, they want to go to bed at 3 and get up at noon, and now at school. It's going to affect learning, Bella. It's going <laughs> to – again, we keep <laughs> – she said, I don't need sleep. Yes. Um, and she does need sleep. We all need sleep, whether we're 6 years old or whether we're 60 years old. And 13-year-olds need 8 to 9 hours a day of sleep. They just do. Um, <laughs> she and just Bella dropped just... her phone out of disgust. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, that scared her and she dropped her phone. But truly, 13-year-olds need eight to nine hours a day of sleep, right? And they just do. Okay, do eight, Bella, please. Um, but the other thing is I've even heard that um, because their minds are developing, mm-hmm. they shouldn't even leave their phones in the room next to the bed because they hear things when they're sleeping that an adult maybe won't hear. Yeah. You know, I can put my phone on the bed next to me. I have to keep the ringer on and I have to. So when I get an email at chirps or whatever it does, Uh and I hear a new pot, a new thing coming in every, but I don't hear it for some reason. I sleep right through it, but you're right. It affects an adolescent brain and it affects their sleep and they hear noises and they hear things and their sleep pattern isn't regular. And so I would recommend that when adolescents are ready for bed, that they put the phone in another room and let it charge all night long because fear of missing out. Right. I want my phone right next to me in case so and so calls or, you know, we don't need to do that. We need our sleep. Take care of yourself. And sleep is a huge part of that. Okay, another thing that I thought was super uh, cool. I mean, of course, exercise you recommended sleep. Uh, Choose people who don't commiserate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's interesting. Like sometimes when you're mad, you want to call somebody that that's will right. go. We all you're do. Right, you go, girl. <laughs> right. But then I call my mom, and she always sees the other person's side. So I think yeah. that that's a part of the mm-hmm. journey too. It is such a huge part. Again, I'll say this: whether you're 13 years old or 80 years old, right? We have this automatic negative. We're I think sometimes born with it. It's the instant easy thing to do is complain, right? And gripe uh-huh. about someone and commiserate with someone. And when we commiserate with someone, you know, I think it's important. It's okay to call a friend and commiserate for a short period of time, mm-hmm. for a minute or two, and then you move on. But don't do a 30 minute phone call or an hour phone call or an entire lunch with the ladies or friends or what have you and just commiserate together about all the negative things in the world, right? I recommend every single person get a therapist. Whether you think you need therapy or not, that person is paid for that hour, Mm -hmm. whether it's $25 or $150, to let you commiserate and just to dump all your negative thoughts and let that person reflect to you and validate some things and challenge you on others. And then when when you're with your friends, be an example of what amazing positive things are going on in your life. I know that sounds cheesy that we don't always do that and it's hard to do that i don't always do it you don't always do it we're going to commiserate it it helps us get through the day but don't focus on it what you want to do is is have a good therapist i think everyone needs a good therapist and uh spend 45 minutes a week with a good therapist who really helps you either validate or challenge you on your thoughts so how would someone go about mm-hmm. working with you guys? Because yeah. after talking, like when I first thought I'd just meet you, and now I'm like, hmm, because I do love all my doctors. Yeah. But what would that look like if somebody wanted to consider becoming yeah. a patient, you a bet. human being a with human you? Being. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, well, I would, I would encourage everyone to look at our website, of course, first. And the website is jflowershealth, H-E-A-L-T-H dot com, jflowershealth.com. They can certainly call my office at 713-783-6655 and talk to Leslie, and Leslie will walk you through that process. But really the process is, is making an appointment to come in and just visit and having a consultation and saying, this is what's going on in my life. And if you can't come in, we'll do it on Zoom and we'll do it on a phone. We happen to be working in the office during COVID. We're socially distancing. We're wearing our mask. We're doing what we need to do to stay safe. Um, And we will always do that. I think it's important, uh, of course, to our health and our mental health. But making that call and reading the website and saying, gosh, you know what? This is I don't know what's calling causing. Everyone tells me I have OCD. Everyone tells me I'm anxious. I have been depressed during COVID and I don't know why my life is going pretty well, but I have this overwhelming feeling of darkness, doom, depression, whatever it is. Or I have an unknown medical problem that no one can pinpoint. 
call us and let us know what it is or what you think it may be and make an appointment and we'll be happy to do a consultation. That's the first part. And then when we decide that you're appropriate and you decide that you're appropriate, then we come in and the first thing that you that I recommend that everybody do is what we call this comprehensive diagnostic evaluation. And that evaluation takes anywhere depending on medical, psychological, the, the issues that are going on, it can take five days or it can take 10 days um, to do that evaluation. And you see about 14, at a minimum, 14 specialists in medical, psychology, trauma, addiction, whether you have addiction or not, we wanna screen for that and talk about it, um, and physical therapy and many other components of our lives. And we develop what I call a living MRI. And what that is, you know, when you walk into an emergency room and you've got a cracked ankle, you fell off a, a, a curb or something, and the doctor walks in and he puts up an x-ray and you see the crack, what we do is, is we build an evaluation so that at the end of the evaluation, it truly is a living MRI of who you are, how you think, how you feel, how you respond, why you think the way that you do. And then we develop a, a concrete set of diagnoses and a path to go forward in life so that you can thrive once again. Because I believe that we all have a right to thrive in life and be happy. And I don't care, I truly don't care how bad of a life that we come from, no matter mm -hmm. what our trauma is. I don't know if anybody watched TV last night, but Gabby Giffords, who was shot five times in the head, was speaking last night at the convention. Um, and that woman has come through literally hell right? Shot five times in the head. And she is thriving today in life and living her best life. And people come from trauma, abuse, sexual history. Um, uh, unfortunately, sometimes uh, sexual violence, domestic violence, depression, OCD, schizophrenia. Sometimes we see parents who bring their children in with schiz unknown or undiagnosed schizophrenia. We can discover what that is and truly help that individual live the best life possible. And I just think that, that, uh, that we all have the ability to live healthy, happy, functional lives. And I just see it as a critical component to life um, because I think that's why we're here. Uh, and the happier we are and the more we thrive mm -hmm. and not just survive, we get to share it with other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so blessed to know you and have this time to share with you. You are amazing. And I just can't wait. I'm coming back for Marty and Sarone. <laughs> I know. And we are going to reconnect and yeah. we want to have you back. I mean, Thank there's you. so many, there were so many different things we could have talked about mm -hmm. and every single topic from, I mean, from Oh Help to mend all of yeah. it. There's so much to talk about, uh, but I do want to have you back for sure to have a podcast on love too. Um, on um, chronic pain and how that has led to this yeah. opioid epidemic and and doctors prescribing and then yeah. substance abuse because you've done incredible work with the Thank Mayo you. Clinic and with the Betty Ford Clinic mm -hmm. and you, um, your co-founder robin had his is from royalty in the <laughs> in the addiction field. addiction field right. and um i want to have you guys on together but then i also want to have robin french on to talk about the emotional side of us getting whole because yeah. we talked about this is we can't be a good partner to someone else and her background was right. matchmaking for so long but yeah. in order to truly be mm -hmm. a good partner to someone we have to know who we are and i think in order to be authentic mm -hmm. we have to know what our core values are we really do and what our partner's core values are as well yes yeah. so that we're choosing mm -hmm. the right people yeah and i would love to do that we'll do that and then you're going to come on my podcast yes and and do some of the same things but thank you so much for having me i really really appreciate it. i cannot believe it feels like I five know. minutes it's just already over yeah but uh, we'll be coming to you next week on Thursday with Marnie and Sarone. And uh, you can also share this with friends on Facebook. On It'll be on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, all of those. And please know we're giving away this amazing Goyard planner. And you'll just follow 
uh, Jay Flowers Institute on Instagram yep. and tag two friends. Follow the Vintage Contessa and That's tag right. two friends, yep. and you'll be entered to win, and we'll do that drawing next week. That would be amazing. Launching it today. Yeah. Guys, take care. Take good care, everybody. Thank you.